Welcome to the LA Convention Center, everyone, where we have a nice little selection of cars shown here this year for you. So sit back, relax, watch it full length. Some of the reviews here from the LA Motor Show. Enjoy here on Autogefühl. The BMW 3 Series has its US American debut here at the LA Motor Show. And this one here is a very special one, the M Performance model, the 3 Series 340i, the M340i. We'll take you on a tour on the exterior, see already this copper accentuations, the interior and also what about the performance and the technology. A full tour of the 3 Series with a special focus on the M340i. Let's go. So this M Performance model features a different front grille with this dot structure. It looks a little bit more powerful. You also get several headlamps option as well. Those ones are the top LED laser lights. So the laser function also for the high beam function. But you don't have to go with the most expensive option anyway. Then in the lower part we see those comp structures in the side. Part. Here also with this um, air curtain, so there's really a spot to let the air flow through. Also constructed in the lower part, so overall a very powerful one. The lighting is a little bit strange always at the motor shows, but this one here, this pure black color, looks surely very aggressive already. It looks maybe as it would be one of the true M models in the past. The M Performance models, as you know, are always one step below the true M models. Standard, the new Sweet 3 wheel starts with LED headlamps in total already. Then option you get the adaptive LED that swing together with the steering. Then, as I said earlier, those ones here, the top spec, the laser light. Doesn't make so much sense to go for it with the US. Regulations might change at some point, but at the moment the range of the laser light is restricted in the US if you compare it to other markets. 4 meters 70 or 15 foot 4 is the length of the new 3 series. That's a couple of centimeters longer than the predecessor. The M Performance model here comes with a special rims. 18 inches standard, 19 inch here, the optional ones, the maximum choice you can get. There's a base suspension for the new 3 series, but that one already includes new hydraulic cushions that they really adapt a little bit more on the road surface. Then this one here comes with an M suspension, 10 millimeters lower. And optionally you can go for the adaptive M suspension that also reacts according to the driving modes you are picking. Really anxious to test that one out. Even the base suspension has supposed to give you more comfort and sportiness then maybe even a little bit more with the adaptive suspension. Design-wise, you can see it's rather an evolution again from the 3 Series. The main design is here above the door handles, but we remain here with a rather classic sedan look. The so-called Hofmeister Knick from a famous designer back in the days at BMW is being transported here at the rear. And this one also all black frames around the windows. And again, with those copper-style accentuations, this copper tone or this brushed aluminum style, it's really famous at the moment. Since the M Performance model also features more performance in power, it shall also feature bigger brake discs in the front, both in the rear. You can see here they are a little bit wider. Also, if you compare them now to the rims, they really fill out the rim almost completely. So also pretty exciting how the braking performance will be on this very model. The weight has been reduced a little bit to the outgoing model, it's about 50 kilograms. That's also accounting for this 50-50 weight balance. So although it's a classic sedan with the engine in the front, they have achieved a 50-50 front axle, rear axle weight balance that shall account to the sporty driving performance. In the rear perspective, you can see we have a small wing lip here, but just a very subtle one. And I like this style that's a little bit sportier, but that does not exaggerate too much. Also with the M badge already, M340i. X-Drive always tells you it has the all-way drive. There's a rear view camera here too. Those new tail lamps are more three-dimensional for all three series models. Then you will have different trims, also like a, um, a Sport Line, an M Sport that goes up the sporty ladder then. And then there's the M Performance model. So even stronger elements also with this rear diffuser style. And even more prominent exhaust tips because, again, those are just exhaust tips. The real exhaust are on the inside. Talking about the rear axle, what else is there to mention for the M Performance model? 
Well, it will get a M Sports differential that will also help you to get out of the corners when you apply all of the power. However, since it's an all-wheel drive model, you will also get torque to the front wheels, so it will, will not matter that much as if you would just have a rear-wheel driven model. Under the hood, there's a 3-liter six-cylinder, 374 horsepower and 4.4 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. This is always coming with all-wheel drive to get all the traction to the ground. Here also has the M Performance model and just visualized in this hood cover here with those six cylinders. And we will soon be able to check out the performance on the racetrack with the prototype model as well. Now to the interior. Inside of the doors, soft materials on the top part. You can see in the lower part there is some spot for bigger bottles there because it reaches a little bit through the interior and the box, the speakers there are curved a little bit. I think it's a good idea. Then it's not only black on the exterior, they also have a black design scheme for the interior here for the M Performance model. Also with the M Sport steering wheel, they are a little bit let's say unsymmetric always, it looks a little bit strange. Um, we will soon turn on also the digi digital instruments, there are several options available there. And let me talk about the seats. The M Performance model will start with a great combination from Alcantara on the inside and CenterTech Leatherette on the outside. Those ones here are however the full animal skin spec. It depends always from market to market, but in most of the markets they'll probably offer this great sports seat where you also don't slide then so much as in this combination. And this is also a lot of black for the interior, I think. Just some blue contrast stitches you can find there. So now I took a seat. The seat form is a little bit different than from the base seats. Your pelvis is tilted a little bit, so I usually put it a little bit higher than for the seats, for example, put in front lower and a little bit higher in the rear. Um, for sports seats, however, they um, still offer some decent comfort. We'll check that out when we drive the car, of course. You're also a little bit wider in the shoulder area that you got some more support than also at the sides. In general, the most important thing about this new 3 Series generation is that they stepped up the build quality and the interior is cleaner and more digitalized. So, so far, they had a great driving car, but the build quality was not as up to date as for the other mid size competitors. And here now, it's really nicely done and well organized. It's rather conservative, yes, but they have also plush materials on top of the dashboard. This checkered structure style here for the M Performance model. And you can see a very well done integration of the screen here. There are different options available. It starts with analog instruments 5.7. This one here is the 12.3 full digital instrument. And on the right side you can start with 8.8 .8 inch, a smaller one. This one here is the 10.25 inch maxed out screen. The temperature is controlled here, still manual basically. So you don't have to do anything in the touchscreen right there. And you also still have a normal volume knob with some hotkeys right there. Well, the steering wheel, again, it looks so strange, but when driving, it's actually quite interesting. But still, I'm a fan of the base BMW steering wheels because I'm not such a fan, you know, when, when the top part is somehow bigger than the lower part here. But that's maybe also just a matter of taste. Important also with the new 3 Series is the voice activation. You can activate it here at the steering wheel or just say, hey BMW. I'm not sure if the car is powered now here properly. No, the battery is um, discharged at the moment, but we have a studio episode with the 3 Series where we also tested the voice activation feature and it worked quite well, for example, setting the temperature or also heading to your next GPS route. That's probably very interesting. As for the room you have here, it's a little bit more spacious than the outgoing model, also headroom-wise. It works with 1m86 or 6 with one This one here, however, equipped with the panoramic roof. I cannot open at the moment because, again, the battery is not charged. But this one would be the gap you have in here for the roof if you want. So it's a um, little bit larger than the predecessor. So they've also stepped up the game right there. And one of my favorite features I know from the exterior, those wing tail lamps, they have gone. But still this wing design here on the top part is still present. Let me give you a tour on the middle console right there, there's a normal USB supply there, then there's a spot to inductively charge your phone in the very front. Those cup holes are also adaptive and then you can always just close it again. Press it and close it like this. Then this is the 
shifting lever, it has a smaller form now. You'll have a hotkey for the camera system, for example. There is now touchscreen, yes, but you can still use this turning and pressing knob or also right in there, for example, for the address if you don't use the voice command. And some hotkeys still. This is basically an even area, but still you could get there some haptic feedback when you press that one. Automatic transmission we have here. There's no manual for this car left. And then we have the middle armrest, which is very well attached. And then below here we have a USB-C supply. So um, this is a mix between normal USB and USB-C. By the way, the lower part here, this is a pre-production model. So this will have a proper cover. We've already seen that in the normal 3 Series review in the studio. So let's take a seat in the back. Well, the 3 Series, not the king of room in the rear. It does exactly fit now here since the car has become a little bit longer. Still, it's not the best car as for the package, as for the room you have on the interior, on the rear, if you consider the exterior length. Headroom-wise, this is still working since the ceiling is raising just a little bit. And it's still okay to sit here in the rear. Surely not the most comfortable space, but this is also a general segment with mid-size sedans. They don't offer the best legroom in the rear. Then there's an armrest here with cup holders. You can also use this ski hatch, just fold the middle part. Yes, you can. And that's the... Ah, there we go. <laughs> so, you can load things through. But then for the seats, hmm, you're searching and searching and won't find anything. So we have to go around and do it from the trunk. However, just a short look here at the middle console. Two more USB-C supplies in the rear, in the middle part. And sitting here in the middle part with this big all-wheel drive tunnel, or it will also be a rear-wheel drive tunnel, getting from the front engine to the rear drivetrain. This is so big, there's no chance I could probably sit here in the middle part also with a stiff... In the, Maybe, you know, for emergency situations, it is registered for the third passenger in the rear, but not really suitable for adults. So what's 480 liters in the trunk? Hmm. Let's just see about that. Electric opening. And here we go. Of course, you're always limited here in the front area. The height here in the top part, this is just about 50 centimeters. And the length of the trunk up till the very end, this one here is just a meter in length, so the length is no problem. This is, um, you know, actually good for loading. It raises here a little bit in the end part. And as for the width, let's see, usually it's just about a meter also in, in width. And it's not quite a meter in width, so it's, see, it's less than a meter in width. So that should be a little bit better, I guess. It will be probably better in the 3 Series Touring. We'll keep you updated with that on Autogefühl as well. Then you'll be less limited also in the height here. Of course, the Touring is mainly a model and for European markets. If you in the US and also want to see more Touring models, more estate models, then tell us in the comments. That's, I think it's a very interesting thing because so far they're rather uncommon. People rather go for SUVs then or so. Uh, but of course the Touring models always have the advantage that they actually offer you a lot of length in the trunk and also width. But here with the sedan here, the M Performance model is maybe a little bit more fitting to the sedan because people want to go for a little sportier style. And last but not least, is it actually working here with the child safety when you have the torque applied? Yeah, that's easily done. I mean, for those small hatches, it's also way easier. So a good electric opening and closing mechanism. And now we are joined by BMW CTO Klaus Fröhlich. He is responsible for development and technology. And of course, we've seen the BMW iNext concept. We've seen the 340i. So there's basically something like a combination between the new future models and the old classic models. Which direction are you actually heading to? I have to do different sprints at the same time. So this car, for example, is uh, the spearhead of the fifth generation of electric propulsion systems. But when it's launched here, it will be in that car, in that car too. It's the same with autonomous driving. Autonomous driving technology level three and four will be launched in that car, but then this digital theme is compatible to do whatever in the next seven series or something like that. So if you think about the new 340i, I would say, you know, the customers maybe have driven the predecessor model and maybe will buy the next generation of this car again. 
will the 3 Series actually stay as it is? Or how is the transition and also for the future technology for like the classic model? Uh, perhaps you have seen last year's uh, BMW i Vision Dynamics. We call it now i4. So the answer is, yes, there will be combustion engine 3 series or 4 series. There will be plug-in hybrids with much ex extended range. But there will be on that same platform also battery electric vehicles. So you have the free choice um, because in the different regions of the world, people will prefer battery electric vehicles, power plug-in hybrids or conventional combustion engines. So you think there is not like one perfect solution? Will it be a lot of different solutions at the very same time? I think that's exactly the challenge we face. We do not know in which country, with which speed, electromobility will succeed. And so um, I have some kind of a jigsaw puzzle. The car platforms on the one side and the technologies on the other. And then um, I have to fit them to be flexible for the, at least the next 10 years. Talking about the M performance models, mm -hmm. what can you do to improve the performance there even further? Because, I mean, technology has gone so far with the classic technology, like you know, putting the car lower, adaptive suspension and so on. Suspension is a really big topic with the new 3 Series. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that. Yes, uh, this was the clear target. Uh, we want to differentiate uh, even more than in the past on driving dynamics to the competitors in the 3 Series segment. So I put a lot of effort that I have a very stiff chassis invested into the suspension system. And for example, the uh, 3 Series you have seen here, 380 horsepowers. I added also a, a slip uh, differential uh, to have more mechanical grip for this high performance. So, maybe we'll see us in Portugal again and drive this car together. Hopefully, or on the Nürburgring, because that's my favorite space. <laughs> ah, I'll take that invitation. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. So, to the conclusion for today for the M340i. In general, the new 3 Series is an evolution on the exterior. On the interior, you have more room. That's very important, so it's more versatile. Also, the interior build quality has been stepped up. The M340i then, the M Performance model. If the M model is maybe too expensive and too extreme for you, but if you already want a lot of performance, and still want this combination between performance and comfort. The M shows the pure sports model with losing in comfort, but here we will be able to experience the comfort very soon and really test it out also on the racetrack because with this adaptive suspension, well, which is a little bit lower here, but still has those new hydraulic elements, we're really anxious to test that out on real driving tests. So join us very soon for the full driving review of the 3 Series both the 330 and the 340i here on Autogefühl. I hope you already enjoyed this episode here together with us. What I really like is to present models that matter to a lot of people, accessible cars. And this is one of those, the all-new Mazda 3, a typical compact size vehicle available as hatch and sedan, goes in the new generation. It's not only that the exterior has changed a lot, also the technology. And here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. We're going to tell you all about it. Exterior changes, the new interior, and of course the technology with this new Sky Active X engine. Let's go. This would usually be the place where I start like, oh, it starts with halogen lamps and it starts with a less sporty front grille and then option you go for this trim and this trim and this trim. But interestingly, Mazda does reduce the complexity now. They don't want to differentiate like, oh, only the sports trim guys get a great front grille or something. They actually want to offer the same sporty design throughout the whole model lineup. A very interesting approach and I think that's really good for the customer. Also, LED comes as standard headlamps. They could only fit them as well anyway, 
because it's a very slim opening with a three-dimensional shape here. It's just that you can go for the high beam option and go for the matrix LED lights as an option. But I think you'll also be just fine with the normal LED lamps. Then you can see a huge front grille now with a sporty look with this glossy black dot structure. The logo will always be 2D now, not only optional, because the autonomous emergency brake is standard equipment, so you always need the sensors which are then hidden behind that logo. But they at least try to give it a little three-dimensional shape still, also because it's a little bit higher here, set, set off from the front grille. You can see it's also symmetrical split and again a very sporty design for a compact Vega and again this is no special sport design line and I think it's also one of the key elements here of the all-new Master 3. 4 meters 45 or 14 foot 6 is the total length and it hasn't really changed if you think about the predecessor. It's a little bit different with the sedan, we will soon show you that. Let's stick with the hatch first, this sole red color, in some markets it will also be called magma red. Is a very interesting one because you can see different shades right there depending on where the light is coming and then this very new prominent C pillar here this has been the same with the concept car of this week we've shown you earlier and they actually kept your feedback they have read your comments and said oh when you really like that we also try to implement that in the series production model master told me interesting then you can see there's no real dropping line, all of the round shapes here around the door handles, so they also try to make the design less complicated and therefore also more timeless. Rims will be either be 16 inch or then directly 18 inch, this one is the top model, but 16 inch already with the aluminum rims, so the only thing that is optional with this car is that you have the bigger rim choice. They're all also say that prices will go up a little bit because you'll already start with bigger engines. Soon I'll tell you more about that. And also some more extra equipment on the interior. Also soon more about that. But still they promise, for example, like a German price, 21,000 as an entry price. I think that's still quite attractive, also considering the equipment you will get later. We'll soon talk about that. What do you think about the new Master 3 design? with the hatch first and for this rear part you can also get this wing you can also get a little bit bigger so to say here in the black contrast so of course there are still some options left you can go to the rear really looks like a sports car well we might lose some interior trunk space there because the rear window is really flat it does not have this typical hatch style more looks like a fastback already here than those led signature tail lamps right there i think it's a beautiful design job and also a very daring job because compact hatches tend to be rather boring but this one here for sure exciting for a standard production model in the lower part you can have this contrast between the red and the black depending by the way also how it looks like on camera it's really true red tone it's not orange or something um, on this uh, fair show light it might be a little bit deceiving deceiving sometimes on camera this one is the sky active x engine we'll soon take a look at by the way and also we can see awd letters here hmm, that's not common for mazda the Sky Active X engine will firstly now introduce again an all-wheel drive option there. Very interesting. Soon tell you more about that. Let's just check the lower end. And this is a real exhaust. It has a decent size and even on the other side, it's a true exhaust. I mean, the outer tip is a little bit bigger, just around, but it's a true exhaust, no fake exhaust. Think also an honest design right here. So, so far, I think, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much surprised that they took such a daring approach and really took almost everything of the concept into this series production model. Or what do you think? And by the way, just taking a look under the chassis, it is a completely new chassis and it's stiffer than the outgoing model. That should also contribute to a more agile driving part. So we're not allowed to open the hood here today, uh, all pre-production models, but let me just show you the hood and <laughs> once more to talk you talk more about the engines. So there will be a 1.8 liter diesel engine with 116 horsepower, then there will be a normal petrol engine, 2 liter petrol engine with 122 horsepower, the Sky Active G, and then there will be the new Sky Active X, also 2 liter, but this one 181 horsepower. Interesting that first of all it can be combined with all-wheel drive, but the more interesting thing is that it uses basic technology that is between petrol and diesel so there's a compressor in the engine first time they use something like that and uh, so before with the petrol engines they were just naturally aspirated 
This one then here with the compressor can also initiate um, self-ignition, which would usually be reserved for a diesel, but not with a petrol engine. So interesting technology. More about that technology in our tech workshop special. We have a separate video for, about that. We'll link that below if you want to know more about technology. Interesting to know is it will have more power for sure. And the same plan is supposed to have less consumption because it should have basically combining both advantages from petrol and diesel. We see about that, how it will be playing out in reality when we have the driving test. Again, in the other video we have some more tech deals about, but really interesting that they offer something more because the naturally aspirated engines so far, they were quite good from consumption standpoint and also realistic. But then again, sometimes select some power if you want to push it through on the motorway or something. There they have a new alternative now for you. What do you think? Let's take a look at the interior of the hatch here first. Inside of the doors, not entirely hard, but also not super soft, but here is softer. Then you can see new window levers. We'll also compare it soon how it looks like in the sedan. It's an optional Bose sound system. Door pockets right there. This is also, I mean, it's not really special that you can bend that one here. Yeah? So when you take a look at here, this is very interesting. So first of all, I got a leather red cover of the dashboard there. Then the top part is also soft. Completely new steering wheel with the button integration here, for example, for the volume. And this also feels better when you just use it. Then you can already see the instruments right there. They're part analog, part digital and feature a 7-inch screen now, 7-inch digital screen. That's really interesting. And there's the new big screen right there, which is then at 8.8-inch. .8 and this always comes with this very setup, left both and le both left and right. So it's really good that they don't offer like three different screen options where you not really know where you end up to. Totally new designed seats, optional animal skin pack, but you go with the fabric seats first as base, which we would recommend. And they have changed the form to add some more comfort. I will also soon in the sedan elaborate a little bit more about that. Let's take a seat here already in the hatch. And I'll also tell you later if the hatch and sedan if it's any different. In the front it will be the same, I can already tell you so far. 1 meters 86 of Secret 1. Leaves a little bit room above my head right there. This is also equipped with the panoramic roof. You will have a little bit more headroom if you leave out any glass roof. This one here with a dark ceiling. The sedan that we're going to show you very soon on the, also on the interior will have a bright ceiling. And indeed, it's a more comfortable seating position. So this one has been improved if you compare the predecessor. The steering wheel is, by the way, not only height and also reach adjustable and 20 millimeters more also as for the reach. So you can easier find a good position now or maybe if you want to vary that at some point. This one here is the electric seat option. Um, you can also get just manual seats. A small cubby hole here in the front, by the way. Very interesting, maybe some for very small items. And that's also the place where the memory seat is positioned. You have two memory seating positions. Usually you have maybe two drivers and then you're also fine with storing your electric setting. So this new interior setup, very interesting. Head-up display is right there. We will project into the windscreen, very interesting. A little bit voluminous now then with the cover right there. Then the new 8.8 inch widescreen is integrated here in a very, yeah, let's say spectacular way. They really want to see, hello, this is where the screen is integrated. The leather red cover here, I think that is nicely done also with contrast stitches and overall a clean design. Well, like those air vents, maybe not that clean as well designed, but here, especially this area, you still have manual control of the vents, of the temperature. That's really cool. I just like to do that, you know, while driving. It's the easier solution than anything else. Seat heating is right there. One USB plug. Then again, look at the steering wheel from here. It makes a little sporty impression and soon going to be able to drive that. And from this perspective, you can also see that the seven inch screen is basically the middle part and that the right part of those instruments are analog each. Well, in the lower part, you will also, um, it's actually quite dark there in the front, you know. I should maybe light it up with the smartphone just a little bit so you can see more of that. And then you have some you know, spots to put your smartphone here in the, in the very front. Also some adaptive cup holders. 
and then you can have a sport mode button in the middle part right there next to the shifting lever where the screen so far when the Mazda was standing still that's their safety philosophy you can use a touchscreen and when it's driving then you can't now you can't at all so they have removed the touch function wow so where everyone else were, was going the other way and also adding the touch function, they went for this multi-commander uh, stick now in the lower part. I think that's a bad decision. You can understand from safety philosophy, but when you offer both, you can for some use the touch while standing still, and then the command driving stuff there, like you know they the, um, navigate in the lower part when uh, driving something. So let's take a look here how it looks like. Um, I think this is not working at the moment here. Not all functions are always available here in the show cars. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth, but there's also the option for, well, not the option, sorry. This the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto is standard equipment. So that's pretty cool. I think also a good solution that they have one screen and also always then with the smartphone connectivity. That's pretty cool. So you don't have to care about that. That you maybe miss something as for this. There it is, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto settings. And you'll be just able to plug them in and then let's go. Yeah, this wide screen makes a good impression. But then I ask myself, why have they made it so wide here, right and left? And then there's just a small screen in the middle. Hmm, I think that could have been improved a little bit. So this is then where you control the screen completely. It also has an interesting clicking sound. Then you go back, hotkey for the GPS, for example, hotkey for your music, then for sound, turning up and down, but you can also do that at the steering wheel. Home button. So it is very well to control and the menu is also quite easy. So it is somewhat okay, especially while driving. But then again, I think they should have kept at least the touch option. So the middle armrest is really soft on the top part. We can slide it backwards and then also open completely. The build quality here is questionable. However, it's a show car, it's a pre-production vehicle. We'll see how it plays on with the real production vehicle then later on. And if you open it, there's reasonable space on the inside. Also a 12 volt power supply and another USB charger to um, then smart, uh, charge everything. That's um, the SD card slot for the map data, then it would also work. So what about the rear? Pretty impressive how that rear door is opening and you can take half of the C pillar here in your hand. So first of all, you can see the setup here. It will get a little bit close. However, we have the same material on the rear door than in the front door. Also again with the plush leather red here, for example, and those new window levers right there. So let's get inside. At least let's try. And you see that gets really close. So at the moment I would push my knees to the front passenger. Let's see if this one will be any better in the sedan because the sedan is a little bit longer, as I said earlier. Headroom, well, the roof raises a little bit. I touch my head on the ceiling just a little bit. Um, I guess it will also be a little bit better in the longer sedan. But I mean, it is somewhat possible, but for tall adults, if you go with four tall adults, it will get really close probably then you have to step up a game and go for the Master 6. This one rather than a vehicle set up for more comfort in the front with those new bigger seats also if you're more traveling with two people or maybe with kids in the back because that's possible with the isofixia at the outside parts but for tall adults in the rear it's not the optimum setup. Some cup holders right there. There's no middle climate unit or something but we're still also in a compact segment. Think about that they also will try to keep the price low but so great things we've seen from this car, but the rear legroom is probably one of the things you can criticize. So if we open the hatch here now, pretty interesting. You can see you can easier access it. 360 liters is here. The sedan has more liters capacity. It's also longer in the trunk. I can, you know, here I can really reach to the end. But this one I can easier access, so it's better to load in. Of course, you're a little bit limited due to this really interesting design you are limited in the height especially in the front area here it will be better if you go a little bit further below here you can also fit a replacement tire that might be interesting and this is also with, equipped with the Bose sound equipment on the inside right there and let's see if we flip the seats cannot do it from here that's also standard with compact hatches we have to go around and then we flip the seats 
like this. Um, oh, can, can you? Yeah, thank you so much. No problem. Great. So, this is possible, and then if we go to the other side... Yeah, you're uh, it's a little bit complicated to do it from here. So, like this, there's someone in the driver's seat at the moment, so that will be com almost completely flat. They can also load through longer things. So this is not an electric tailgate, but you can already close it here, for example, when you, you know, finish your groceries or something and get home or something. So you close it then right here, don't have to do it with the key. And this is also interesting, you can ha use this grab from the inside that you don't make your hands dirty when you maybe put it on the outside when the car is dirty from the outside. So interesting solution. And now we are switching over to the sedan. It is also called Fastback by Mazda. Although I'm not quite sure if it's a fastback, we will find out. Also, there are some parts which are a little bit different from the hatch. Also, lengths a little bit different. Let's tell you more about that. The basic front shape is the very same, but they had an interesting idea. They want to make the hatch more sporty from the front wheel, and this one is a little bit more elegant. So, this does not have the vertical dot structure, but you know this more horizontal dot design. It's very interesting, depending also the angle you look at it. So. The sedan will always look like this in the front, whereas the hatch will always get the other front grille. Again, they are both similar, but I think it's also an interesting idea to differentiate hatch and sedan a little bit in the design. Or what do you think? The sedan is at 4 meters 66 or 15 foot 2, and that is 8 centimeters longer than the predecessor. So whereas the hatch rather remained the same in length, the sedan's a little bit longer, for example, especially for the US market, also referring to the interior size then. And then there's also a bigger gap in the length between the hatch and the sedan, which is then at about 20 centimeters difference. We see the, how that one will play out on the interior. In general, you can see this are also more elegant rim choices, so also 18 inch, but the other ones, of course, a little bit sportier. This one here, again, then tuned also more on elegance. You can However, pick either color for that, and there's also a matte gray finish available, which also looks very interesting. Again, also with a rather round sensor shape at the rear, and then we have this typical falling design line at the roof. Also a little round shape right there, so the hatch definitely looks more dramatic, the sedan looks more classic, and you can see the C shape of this C pillar. It does not come out that strong as in the hatch, because the roof somehow catches it, catches it, and I already see it here now. It's not a fastback to me because then the rear window will lift up. It's just a separate trunk we'll soon take a look at. Which one do you like best? Hatch or sedan? In the rear you can again see the new tail lamps, but here in the sedan version you can see it looks again less dramatic, so the all new hatch looks somehow newer, although they share a lot of stuff. But then again, as you have this, this typical sedan hatch style, it takes from this traditional building style a little bit away from this new elements. Still, I think it is very well designed, very voluminous here in this lower area. I think they could also use the length a little bit more, probably has just design reasons. And this one is, by the way, also the Sky Active G, so that's not the new Sky Active X engine, this one here, the classic petrol one. Taking a look at the interior of the sedan, here again with those new door hands. Let's take the door closing sound here. That could sound a little bit better, but then you know, I'm a very diligent, diligent car tester. Then interior, the top part here is, well, it's not entirely hard, but it's also not super soft, it's something in between. This one here, a leatherette cover, very well integrated with those handles. Optional Bose sound system, that's one of the options left. They've increased also the build quality here of the window levers. Before that, it was really, really cheap. Now, as decent build quality also for that. It's a rather slim door pocket, but should also be still possible for some bottles. Then, well, it's hard to see now in this um, motor show light. It's really dark, also the all black interior. But you can see the total new steering wheel, which looks more modern, sporty and slim. Also better integrated with those buttons, for example. Soon more to displays and stuff. The seats are having a completely new form. This one is the optional animal skin package. It will also start with fabric seats, which we recommend because they stay cooler in summer and also warmer in winter times. Electric seat control in this case. And interesting is, when I take a seat right now, we already know from our prototype 
prototype drive that the seat form has been changed to increase the comfort, that it's more following the natural S form of your spine. And indeed, if you just take a seat here and compare it to the predecessor, this one here is way more comfortable. It doesn't feel like, you know, especially when you're taller, I mean, one meter is 86 or 6 foot 1, you sometimes get into compact cars and say like, okay, it's fine, but I don't want to spend like two or three hours in the car. And then you get like in a mid-size or upper mid-size vehicle and you say like, hmm, this is really decent comfort. And here now with this new seat form, you realize it immediately that you just feel better when just sitting in the car. So this is also one of the big improvements. Um, also, um, your pelvis is supposed to stay a little bit more upright. And this is even increased when you lift the seat a little bit higher in the very rear. Interesting. Then there's a manual control here for the steering wheel and reach and height like this. So you can find a proper position. Um, the interior, when you look to the front, also feels a little bit sportier, a little bit more voluminous, because here they have now also hidden the new head-up display that will be available. It's also built in this car. That, however, makes this part more voluminous. Leatherette cover here, and the top part here is also from soft touch, like that. And I also like that they have a bright ceiling here on the interior everywhere with the sedan. I would prefer that over an all black setup so if you look a little bit um, you know more above here so we have a little bit more light by the way if I put my seat in the lowest position let's check the headroom right here it leaves some headroom it's maybe not for the tallest people when you have this panoramic roof but you see it does still work for taller drivers and again best thing is that they have improved the seating comfort I can already feel it right now so the interior of the sedan is not really different just to show you it briefly black leather red cover right there also with the integrated screen which will always be the case and the climate unit again just from this perspective here those vents here on the right side they look a little bit strange um, but it may, maybe they designed that and then say, oh wait a minute we forgot some vents let's put them somewhere <laughs> what do you think how that one came to place this one here has a glass roof, you see here with this manual cover, that's fine. And then you can also open it if the car would be powered. Let's now check the rear here with the sedan. And well, it does exactly fit somehow, but it's not really, you know, I would have expected more here actually. So, I mean, the new seats here are very thick. So, and especially since the sedan is longer, I really would have expected more legroom here. So, so far, a lot of the stuff that we saw with the car is really excellent, awesome, great price performance and stuff. But the interior, you know, some of the stuff where they are not up to date with the competition, now definitely better with the build quality in this generation. But I think the legroom here is the key problem of this vehicle, if there is one. And headroom here in the sedan, see the roof is falling just a little bit. Mm, I do hit my, not my head, but my hairs already. <laughs> in the middle part here, that's again some cup holders with a middle armrest. Mm, the seating position itself is quite okay, but again, really have some problems where to put my leg here um, properly. And by the way, the materials on the rear door are just the same than on the front door so it's not a super hard pack it's a little bit soft here i think it's um, quite okay what they've used here for the interior materials and isofix here also at the outside of the seats the middle seat is also usable but again with the middle tunnel here where they also reserved that for the all-wheel drive and um well that's not really an adult seating position here in the in the middle part so it's rather like for two adults for sure so what about the trunk? This is different here with the sedan, whereas we had this 360 liter with a hatch, 440 liters here. And you can see here, you're a little bit limited, of course, when loading in and out, but it is definitely longer. This is very interesting then. And you flip the seats then from the rear here, you have to release them right here and here. And then you have to go around and can flip them from the rear part here here we go and here we go and then we have the maximum setup of course here the front seat would have to be a little bit more on the front 
Well, we have already experienced the Master 3 as a prototype drive and I can already tell you it drives really much better than the previous generation, more silent as for the noise insulation, also more dynamic and of course since we have this compressor then when you pick that engine more powerful. Also in the exterior you see it stayed relatively close to the concept vehicle which you guys also really loved, so more central design, less complicated design lines too and a very interesting color. Quality upgrade on the interior and more seating comfort. That would be very important to me. And I think it's a very good approach where a lot of different manufacturers go for very complicated price lists or build configurators. They actually reduce the complexity. Yes, the entry price is a little bit higher, but you get already a bigger engine and you have more extra equipment. It's finally a vehicle where you could go to the showroom and say, just leave the base model as it is. Don't go for any options and you'll still be fine. And I think we need more of those cars, really. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. And also join us when we drive the standard model here of the all-new Mazda 3 very soon in our full driving review on Autogefühl. Welcome to the world premiere of the new Porsche 911. This all-new generation, codename 992, we will present to you on Autogefühl, on exterior, interior, and what might be the technology highlights We'll tell you all about it in Auto Fuel with Thomas. Let's go! The all-new 911 is 4.5 centimeters wider in the front, so it has an even bigger stance on the road. And if you look at the very first edition and then look at the latest one, you see a massive difference in the size. It comes with new LED headlamps and yes, of course, they, they've kept it round. There was one generation you've just seen also where they didn't put the round headlamps and people hate them for that until today. This one here is not only the standard LED headlamp, it's the LED matrix headlamp. So an even upgraded system for the high beam and you see this four dot structure for the daytime running light all around it. Also, they took some quotations of past 911 models, for example, in a lower air vent. This looks, you know, more angular than before and also how they cut out the front hood. So they're going a little bit retro style, especially already in the front. Do you like it? Well, under everything you can see, they have been using more aluminum now for the new generation to keep the weight low. And what you can see is actually the typical strong shoulders in the front and of course also in the rear. Then they have mixed tires. So here for the 911S, there's 20 inch in the front, but 21 inch rims in the rear. So the rear tires are bigger than the front ones for even more racetrack performance, for example. But the front wheels, they will feature a sensor in the wheel arch for the so-called rain mode. And when the sensors actually detect a lot of rain, then the car will suggest a rain mode, which will then have to be accepted first. And if the car, you know, the driver in the car accepts this, the throttle input will be drawn back, for example, and the ESP, the electronic stability system, will also work a little bit more actively. So they react, react on that actually to make it a little bit safer because there's even more horsepower on the hood now. We'll soon tell you, tell you more about that. Of course, the rear hood, not the front one with a Porsche 911. Well, other than that, design is pretty sleek. 
This one here, the new door handles, at the moment they stand out, but they will be electrically supported even to improve the aerodynamics. And then again, the most lovely part of 911 is always this very strong shoulder and everything looks like it has been wrapped really, really tightly, especially toward the rear part. So again, this side profile is probably the main reason why this vehicle is loved all over the world. So at the rear, what you can see is, well, I'm not sure if you see it at the first side, but all 911 rear have the same width now. Before the all-wheel drive models were a little bit wider in the rear and the usual models were a little bit slimmer. Now all have the typical wide rear. Design-wise, as we've seen with recent Porsche facelifts and also in all new models, we have this LED strip running all over the vehicle. That looks pretty impressive for sure. Then you have the also additional third braking light in the um, vertical side on top of the vehicle. And well, the exhaust, just a quick check. Yes, even for a Porsche, they use those fake exhaust tips. So the real exhaust is on the inside and there are actually four exhaust tips as I see it. Well, that looks like a second layer of fake exhaust tips. Well, that's a really strange thing here. So yeah. I mean, the upper area is really beautifully done, I think, and looks somehow modern, but still, again, with some quotation of past models. There will also be a foldable wing here for this one, not a fixed one. But then again, the thing with the fake exhaust tip, I'm not really sure if that is really a true Porsche tradition. And the lower part here, again, fitting to the vehicle paint. I think the lower part here is a lovely finish, which is corresponding to this silver color. We also have some more colors for you. Well, I promised to show you some different colors. This one, the bright yellow. And in this case, especially the lower contrast here with the black elements is very well played out then. This one, by the way, here also with the standard LED headlamps. So at first sight, they look pretty much similar. I think it's good that you don't have to go for the highest LED spec that it, to make it, you know, good looking or something so pretty similar in the styling for sure and again you can see those special moldings here in the front hood which you have added you think that's better than the previous generation at first set of course they look pretty much similar so they're taking this evolutionary step but then again as i told you with some of the details here also with the turning indicators in the lower part very interesting i think I like it, you know, when they do some retro style with the cars. It's actually also contemporary at the moment to go a little bit retro again. Or what do you think? Wow, this is a delicious side profile, isn't it? Also with those retro style rims here. In the biggest trim, again, 20 inch front, 21 in the rear. The entry models, however, will come with smaller rims first. But I would love to take those retro rims together, maybe not with a yellow color here, but then with a bright blue, the Miami blue for example. Here also when the door handles are fold in you can see they are almost completely flat and then if you open them here like this they come out. So interesting. It feels a little bit weird to open them but it's better for aerodynamics. Again I'll just leave you again with this beautiful side perspective. And the yellow perspective in the rear, this one here, the 911 Carrera S. Also with those bumpers here by the way retro style as well. I mean they surely serve a protective function if there are some minor bumps from the rear. Not sure if they are really fitting design wise but they are of course practical. This is more of a night blue than of a bright blue and talking about night there will be a night driving assistant here for this vehicle. We've already seen it with the other bigger Porsche models that might be useful for some areas where there's not you know any public lighting for example. And talking about safety and the system systems finally they are introducing an autonomous emergency brake from the standard equipment. Very good choice now and a little bit late but better late than never. This car here, by the way, also equipped then again with the optional LED matrix light system. Do you see the difference? I can show you again the difference in detail from the normal LED and here the LED matrix that you can see something of the difference. Pretty elegant here for sure. It doesn't look so well in the lighting they've picked here. A lot of different spots, so it looks a little bit strange, but I think in normal daylight this color would be looking pretty awesome. I really love the rim choices here today. I like the retro style but this one here also with the spider style for example also one of my favorites and behind this one here is the optional ceramic 
brake disc and with the yellow brake calipers to basically signalize it and then you can see this special structure and it's also really huge. Again, I can recommend it for racetrack use, yes. For non-racetrack use, it's basically not used hard enough. And then it, for example, can start squeaking or something and can also collect some stones. I had that a couple of times now with uh, ceramic brakes and then it also starts making weird noise and you have to, you know, remove everything, build everything out again. So um, for a normal car customer, I think it's a useless option basically. You just pay a tremendous amount of money. What is good that they, the rims keep cleaner. However, Porsche with the new KN also introduced this new um, surface coating, which is basically applied to normal brake disc and then they reduce the braking dust by 90%. I guess they'll also offer that for the 911. That would be maybe a cool function if you say, you know, don't need to have the ceramic brakes, not going racing, but still want to have my rims a little bit cleaner all the time. And here we can also see how it looked like when the rear wing is folded up. That looks a little bit strange, right? And it's really massive meanwhile. So this will create a lot of downforce. Well, from this engine here, you can fold up this small cover, but be careful because of heat. You can put in the fluids right there. This one here, a three liter flat engine, six cylinder, 450 horsepower. Now, so it's an increase of 40 horsepower if you compare it to the predecessor model. This one here for the 911S model, and this one either with rear wheel drive or with all wheel drive. 3.7 or 3.6 seconds in the acceleration to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And changes a little bit then when you put in the sport chrono package of course this one here is still the key effect of the vehicle the engine is in the rear the weight is at the rear of the vehicle and this of course brings you more traction when accelerating however if you get loose with the car it's really hard to catch it it's for example easier with the midship engine concept if you think about the Boxster or the Cayman so there's definitely pros and cons to this concept has been from the beginning on. But this is what the 911 is surely characteristic for. And really interesting, again, how that looks like with this new design element, which was also taken on um, over from the um, early turbo models, from the very first 911 turbo, especially when it's flipped up. Isn't it? Peculiar, right? So let's take a look at the interior, the inside of the doors, again, wrapped tightly as the exterior. Then we have some wood use here, but we can also get some other inlets as the decor elements, if you want it a little bit sportier. Also well integrated with the door handle right here, very interesting. Memory seats and the window levers right there, the window buttons. Very slim door pockets, so you can hardly fit anything substantial in there. Then this one here, equipped with brown animal skin, all the way over the seats and, and the steering wheel. There will be different seat forms, also with different electric functions available. So far, they offer nothing which is free, free of animal skin, so not all, you know, especially not for the California customers, which more wants more sustainable factors. But they say they are working on it and will bring something for the Taycan, for the um, electric vehicle and you can get an Alcatara leather mix at least already. Here again with the matte woods, really interesting. It feels very well, just shown also sound wise. And you still turn on the engine right here at the left side of the steering wheel, but not with the key itself. It's keyless basically, and then you use this one here to put it on. It's like it has been before. Well, the door sill looks pretty much like in the generation before. Also, the first impression is somewhat similar for sure. You control the seats in the lower part. I'm 1 meter 86 or 6 foot 1. And if I put the seat in the lowest position, which is taking a while, you know, well, there's, there's still plenty of headroom. Wow. That's surprising. So, even for tall people, that won't be a problem. But of course, you sit very low as it's supposed to be in a sports vehicle. The look to the front, you can still see those round shapes of the headlamps but what you can now also see is this molding in the front hood that has been added so far interesting is that the biggest change here for sure with the digitalization so if you take a look here in the front of the steering wheel there's still the analog rpm meter 
is a very prominent position. And then left and right, you can see those digital gauges. So this can then be, for example, used for the GPS and so on. There's a digital speedometer in the middle part. The ACC is still at the separate lever right there. But everything looks a little bit more modern. The driving mode selector is right here with an interesting clicking sound. And then you'll be able to click the middle part for this boost function. The steering wheel can be adjusted electronically. Like here at the lower part of the steering wheel and you can adjust it in reach and height. Also, of course, with the pedals right there to shift the gears. We'll start with the 8-speed DCT or this Porsche dual clutch transmission. Later on there will also be a manual um, gearbox available so if you're more the purest kind of guy. And there's a new 10.9 inch screen in the middle one. We'll take a look at now from another perspective. So this is a new bigger screen, 10.9 inch. Let's take a look at here. So all touch like this. Seems quite responsive so far. We're in Los Angeles today. Greetings to all our US guys out there. So the software already know from the from, from the Panamera, for example, or the new KN. The climate unit will be available soon when we start the system. So at those showcars, not everything is working. App-wise, well, they will still offer Apple CarPlay. I have not heard yet that they, for example, also feature Android Auto. Then you'll have some hotkeys below there and with a nice clicking and this metal knurling. This one will be to deactivate the traction control. And this gear lever, this one, is pretty new. Again, with this interesting metal knurling on the top. This one is so small, and then you put it um, actually back to put in D or front of the arm, but, but when it's not turned on the engine, it's basically... Ah, there it is. So that would be... That feels a little bit strange, actually. Hmm. Okay, interesting. But I like it, how it's been done here with the temperature unit. That's nice with the metal knurling again and the clicking sound also for the vents. So you still have a possibility to change the temperature manually and not only via the touchscreen. But like, this is a razor, something, you know, I could shave with that in the morning. You're like, <laughs> or sh shave my shave my hand hair now here. <laughs> Come on, guys, really, seriously. Well, and then let's take a look further here at the middle console. This is here, for example, the seat ventilation, seat heating. Again, mad wood is being used. Adaptive cup holders. That is also a nice integration now for a single um, for a single um, beverage or something. Electric handbrake, and then there's this. Um, rest, one USB, two USB, classic USB, there it is, no USB-C, and an SD card. And, let's close it again, see, can't be shaken. So, the build quality, I mean, for 120,000 euros, which this car is costing, you can expect this build quality for sure. 128 if you go with the oil drive, German prices. And if you go for the sports chrono package, the car will be a little bit faster. And for example, also features this analog clock. We also know from the models before. Here we go with the analog clock with a little cover. Well, in this uh, brown animal skin, it's of course, you know, you have to like that style for sure. Let's just test it on the top part. This is also soft. And then just this part here in the front, this is then hard pack. So, and let's get in the rear, and where well, you can already see, when I would be driving, I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Well, the car is not powered at the moment, so the seat doesn't flip forward, so I cannot get inside, but this, you see, is pure emergency seating. There's isofix at the outside parts, eats for the child seats. You can also um, flip those back parts here that you can um, put actually, um, you know, uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> so half, I mean, you know, now you can see this is a strong mold here, then Again, you can put something on here if you like, but sitting here is not really possible unless you put the co-driver seat all the way in the front. And here we go now. So on the outside part there, you can flip those down that you can protect the seats and put the bags right here. So you have an additional storage area. So let's take a look under the front. By the way, here, see there's no 
new design lines here on the top of the hood, very interesting. And, well, this is actually a reasonable space. You can really put a cabin trolley in there if you, you know, see, you can reach in there quite widely. It don't seem different to me. Maybe it's even a little bit bigger than before, just, just purely visual. Um, it's always a little bit more complicated to open because you need to have the separate release and release before with the key or from the inside of the car. But always something which makes this car, which is a pure sports car, a little bit more versatile. So here again about the door handle. So when you open the car, this part here is what comes electronically. And then the rest of the part you do manual again. And again, oh, it, it somewhat feels a little bit weird. I'm not sure about this. What, what don't you do for aerodynamics? Then this one here is the bright interior style, also with a different decor element. So this is not wood. This is more like an like an aluminum mesh. This one here, the 4S model, by the way. So the one with all-wheel drive. And you can see also how the bright style on the seats will work out. And also this mesh on the dashboard. So the wood is more the cozy variant. This one here, a more modern one. This looks pretty cool. And it's also fitting to those knurled structures on the buttons and again I think the knurled structures on the buttons on the mm, tiny ones it's really cool but I can't get over the gear lever can you this one is the classic black interior and also this one is one alternative where we have the fabric on the inside of the seats you still have some animal skin parts, but that's already a good solution that it stays cooler in summer and warmer in winter time. Same also in the top part. So at the moment, I think I would go for that one. It's also, again, some retro style element we've seen from past Porsche models. And let's just test if it's more comfortable or something. It's really interesting. So it's a little bit stickier than with the um, with the animal skin seats, but still the fabric is not as sticky as we would have with microfiber or something. So it's something in between, but actually quite cozy. I mean, if you want more comfort, you would surely go rather for a Kien or for a Panamera. Panamera. That's why more and more um, Porsche customers also went away from the 911. It's surely not the most comfortable car. That's what hardly any sports car is. But you can adjust the seats in a lot of different ways for sure. And you have enough headroom, as I said earlier. And we you know with this seat setup, it's actually quite okay. And you have a little bit more room than you would have in the Boxster or in the Cayman for sure. And again, with the steering wheel adjustment. So we have three interiors here today. Just follow them all through and then tell me which interior style you would actually go for. Here, by the way, if you maybe already seen it with a carbon fiber style decor element, you can see it at the inside of the doors here and also here next to the steering wheel, for example. So here now, this car is properly powered, so you can also see the temperature is changing. And let's see if it also works with voice activation. Temperature set to 69 degrees. Temperature set to 69 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool, so that worked well. That's another possibility. And let's see if it also works for the GPS. Take me to San Francisco. One moment, please. Please select an entry. So we have a couple of San Francisco's here, but <laughs> you can see at least it worked that it's easier now than here also in the Porsche 911 to enter some GPS stuff that you don't have to type everything in. And since this vehicle is also probably powered, we can show you more of the instruments. Here on the left side will be basically a digital analog screen. Let's say, so digital, <laughs> cancel please. So left screen right there, then the analog in the middle. On the right one, you'll have, for example, temperature and stuff. And again, when the GPS route is running, the screen will also switch off, for example, when you face an intersection. So now I'm at the co-driver seat and this would be, you know, I could only sit this way, not any, any way near possible. They could change the seat and then if I flip that one, I mean, it doesn't work for the driver's seat at all, but here for the co-driver seat, then I could get in the rear. Yeah, 
So, and... Nah, I think... I'm not sure if the door would even close, so... This... Nah, I think this time it's really not possible, but... At least it's still possible to have a time code with Thomas in the rear seat. <laughs> What do you think about the all new 911? I think what I find the best is that they took some of the new design languages back from the past, so some retro styles. I really like those, and I think that's a very interesting evolution for sure. As for the interior, new digitalization, it looks cleaner than before, and they have adapted some new elements there too. I think it is also a good approach for a design icon that they don't change something too radical. As for the engines, more house horsepower output as usual and you can expect even better acceleration, so also some fine tuning there. But for sure you can also see that big time, the time of the naturally aspirated engines is over. Might be some you know, special edition models for that again. Today we've started here with the 911S, but of course we'll take you on another tour with some different models. We'll soon also show you a different a workshop with a ride along for example. So stay tuned on Autogefühl for further coverage of the all new 911. And now let's discuss this new generation. What will a future BMW look like? How will you experience the interior? And what other functions will it actually offer? This year, the BMW Vision iNext, supposed to hit the roads in 2021, maybe like this, maybe a little bit different, and, well, they're doing this exact car to show what we, and also what you, think about this concept vehicle. And here on Autogefühl, we'll explain all about it, with Thomas here, in exterior, interior, and the exciting features. Let's go! seen with recent new BMWs that the double kidney has become larger and larger and larger and they have some elements of dissolving between the two double kidneys and that's the pinnacle of it. So you see that the typical double kidney is totally dissolved into one element. Also with play around with the LED lighting and all of the sensors this car is having are hidden behind this double, well now maybe mono kidney. Also slim headlamps and well this car does need a lot of sensors because it's supposed to drive autonomously already. You can still drive it on your own. 
how that one will be the solution, we'll take a look at the interior. Let's first finish this exterior view, but take a look at the color. How it is in the front, and how it will be at the rear. So here you can see that in the front is more like a rose gold, and when you keep further onto the rear, this one is more than a copper tone, so it's also dissolved in the color. Very interesting solution for that. 24 inch rims, of course, this is with most show cars that the rims are actually bigger than they actually are. They won't offer you so much comfort, I guess. And you can see there are no physical side mirrors. This is also a camera solution. Then you will see the, you know, all of the screens on the interior will give you the view from here. We've seen the solution already with the Audi e-tron from the standard production model. This will be a you know big subject of the future because when you have nothing which stands out here, it's actually better for the wind efficiency. So um, this will play a major role in the future. Then there's also LED lighting at the side profile in the lower end. And it is very impressive how the doors are opening. We've seen it also with other concepts already because they leave you a great view on the interior. By the way, the rims, you've maybe already seen it. Also, they are all the way trimmed for the aerodynamics. And this car will also belong to the BMW i product range. And that's also why the basic design elements are somewhat similar, but of course, with a lot of big glass uh, areas right there. It also gives you a new design language. Also again, by the way, playing with this double to mono kidney transition. You can see it's a little bit of the front design also here at the side profile. What do you think? It has the dimensions of a mid-size SUV. It has those crossover elements you've seen at the wheel arches. And in the rear, it has a rather strong appeal. This is it reminds me a little bit of the Renault Velsartes, you know, this was a, was a van where it had this glass cover here at the rear and you could check something of the interior. It's very interesting. Then again, a sporty look with those widely drawn tail lamps. And in the lower part, it has more sporty element because it looks like a big diffuser. And I love those illuminated badges right there. That would be cool also with other models, wouldn't it? So, this design approach here has already aroused a lot of attention. Of course, today we can exclusively take a look at the interior. Let's do that now. So, let's open the doors. That works electronically. Ta-da! And this, of course, gives you a very good look inside. And different fabrics are being used. So, more details for that. And I'll take a gentle seat inside. Because I don't... Shall scratch the floor. Everything is really precious here. So in the front, the interesting thing is there are two modes, the ease mode and the boost mode. So boost mode would be when the steering wheel is towards me and I just steer the car as I would normally do, see flat and flat and bottom. And the ease mode would be the steering wheel goes back, also those pedals, they fold in. And this would be that I can move around more freely and maybe also talk to the other passengers and so on. And you've maybe already realized that the co-driver seat is folded. That should be possible here as well. So maybe if I want to talk to someone who's sitting behind me, what you can also imagine is that the seats maybe one day flip around or so, that the passengers face, face each other. And the interesting thing is it's, everything is very light and bright and with cozy different fabric materials. And that creates really a living room atmosphere. And even more so in the rear, so I gently get out of the car. Right? Maybe you've seen also this is the um, uh, carbon core look we've seen also with the BMW i models. And here in the rear part, you can see this is basically one bench, like a sofa or something. And when I get in here, there's a fabric floor then too. This is, by the way, also good for the sound insulation because it's actually more silent when you have a lot of fabric materials even on the floor. And this is a you know, really rather thick floor. And here it's, it's very interesting, especially when someone sits next to you because you connect more to each other, for example. There's also this huge panoramic roof. It's basically just one glass roof. And in the front, you don't see so much from it. But if you sit in the rear, you can see the sky view then. And 
Well, here it's actually quite cozy and you have a lot of room here inside. The electric car setup also enables you not to have any middle tunnel. The batteries will be placed in the lower ground. And then there's also one special feature I want to show you in detail. Here we go again. You can see the doors go open at the other side the very same way. You can take another perspective when the one of the front seat is fold basically that can have a better um, you know speaking situation so to say. And again, all those materials here they uh, feel differently. This is more the microfiber. This is more um, you know uh, a different fabric surface. Also different colors being used. But everything for itself could be actually a piece in your living room and absolutely animal free so sustainable materials and also animal friendly that's also where other manufacturers are heading to on the long term run of course this part here in the front the, the table could also be something you know for for flat iron, ironing or what do you think <laughs> here right there uh, we'll soon get to that first of all i want to show you this middle part here because we've shown you that in some interior specials i can actually use this middle part here this is like an inbuilt screen i can write something i can address maybe or also some commands and one thing is for example when i write an, an, a note like you know a, mu a music note for example um, then music appears this is also one of the functions you could theoretically use with the car and the same is applying also for this front wooden table because next to fabric Wood is also um, something that is being used frequently here. Here in the front, there's also again a pad I can um, I can write to here in the front, and this is then also interacting with the screen. So when I do some something here at the wooden pad, I can also control the front screen. So those concept vehicles are also something where designers and engineers can also play with a little bit, and one of those playing features is this projector in the in the roof part. And this is actually projecting down and then you can, for example, hold a, like an empty tablet where you can receive the projection. If it makes sense or not, I mean, that remains to, the, to be discussed. But I think it's very interesting that they take new approaches here to see where something is maybe heading or maybe not. And then you can discuss maybe those new ideas if they make any sense. So again, to use those two screens, you see one bigger one is maybe is like a layer in front of the other one. So the one classic for the instruments, this one in the huge widescreen format, I then controllable with this middle pad. And it will actually be the case in a lot of new of the very future vehicles. You see, there's basically no single button in this vehicle. That's also one of the reasons it looks so clean. And then you can makes just surfaces as control elements or as buttons and of course this one can still be used as a normal touchscreen if you like especially if you're in a um, autonomous mode then you have more time also to do something with the touchscreen as i said earlier also pure electric range so we also have some range information there and also the, the power right there um, the question is can i still imagine driving such a vehicle the front screen, for example, is more like a panoramic view, is more like for a travel view. Mm, definitely the car says less sportiness and more living room feeling, more comfort. This is not the fully autonomous level, therefore it does still have a steering wheel. The, the, you know, the, complete, the most complete autonomous level would be then to to total without a steering wheel. What do you think? Would you actually buy a car without a steering wheel? Or do you think even if it can drive autonomously, you still want to have something to hold on. At the moment, I think I still think so. So to me, one of the best things is, of course, this very bright and cozy interior. And now to our conclusion with this concept episode. Well, as I told you initially, this vehicle has one purpose, to gather opinions, to show ideas, and also to gather some pros and cons. And let me give you mine, and then you will give me yours in the comments. So I think on the exterior we can surely argue about that very huge double kidney. I think that's maybe a step too far and I would actually keep the classic double kidney setup that BMW has as for the design. With the electric vehicles you don't have to make anything in the front grille perspective bigger or something. 
so you could also stay with a rather classic approach there. The slim headlamps, they of course look quite modern and what I really love is this color transition. I think you can do a lot maybe also with personalization that you don't have to be staying with one color, maybe with a slight nuance over the vehicle. That's pretty cool. The interior is really my favorite as for this furniture concept that you make an interior of the car where you spend all the time like a living room, like a, you know, like a place you really feel at home and feel cozy, especially with the animal friendly materials like the microfiber and the interesting fabric use. And again, you can bring some more personalization there and also then natural materials like wood, again, to also give you some, some haptical feeling. I think a very good approach especially that BMW also shows that future of cars will be more sustainable even on the interior. Then those functions that, for example, you have even less buttons and some surfaces will get a meaning. That's definitely an interesting idea and suppliers have also been experimenting with that recently. I think we will see that one by one dissolving into the car interior design for sure. Well, those flipping seats, I mean, surely it has more sense when the full seat is flipping when you're driving totally autonomously then you always have to think about crash safety if you for example flip a head restraint i think that's not the best thing for crash safety at the moment i would like to keep a steering wheel just for you know when something is fading you know i don't want to trust in the electronics completely maybe they will be changing in 10 years or so but i think it's an interesting transition where to go and that the car is fully electric is somehow not even worth mentioning because from those very future vehicles more and more will be electric and one of those of the i range will of course be one so that's the concept and again somewhat similar shall be arriving in 2021 and what's the next real roadmap for the bmw group in 2019 there will be the electric mini and in 2020 there will be the ix3 so the electric x3 those are the next two steps for them then this one will come. And now, what do you think in pros and cons? Tell us, and BMW will be surely eager to read that. And we, of course, here at AutoGoFuel as well. So join us also for the next real car episodes. I hope you really enjoyed our reviews here. Of course, we couldn't deliver you all cars today. We had very limited time this year. And also the Kia Soul, the only generation which we wanted to show you wasn't even revealed at the moment we are actually recording at the moment pretty late reveal for the day but of course we want to show you that at the later stage here on Autogefühl and if you're interested in any specific car for example the Kia Soul please note in the comments that we can take on for a review or even maybe already a full driving review of that so see you at the next full review of Autogefühl or maybe one of our other motor show coverages tune into those they are really exciting too and still a lot of new cars to come